Welcome to Blaze the Trail podcast, bringing you authentic and vulnerable stories that will inspire you to breathe fire on this world and become your own hero. Here's your host, Blaze Hunter. Welcome to Blaze the Trail podcast. I'm Blaze Hunter, and I am a fertility expert. No, I don't help people get pregnant. This is a different type of expertise. I actually inspire women to birth their dreams, passions, and goals, as well as help them discover peace amongst infertility. After going through traumas and tragedies, dealing with a rare disease, and experiencing three miscarriages, I decided to take charge of my life and not let life happen to me but rather become the hero of my own life. I am not barren. I continually birth my purpose every single day. So that's why I've created this show, to demonstrate how even though we experience setbacks and disappointments and hardships, we still have a destiny to birth. We just need to blaze the trail and be expecting. This podcast will inspire you to lean into your problems and allow them to be the vehicle that transports you into becoming the hero of your life so you can breathe fire on this world. This week's episode is called Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. This is my journey of how I overcame a pattern of lying. I lied to myself and lied to others for most of my life. And I'll explain how Self-reflection led me to understand the reason behind the lies. Truth is about trust. And how a defining moment allowed me to lean into the mess and the flaws and birth truth in my life. I am a published author, international speaker, fertility expert, and certified life coach. My coaching practice is based on the quote from Fred DeVito, What doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. I want to challenge myself and the world to take off the masks and get vulnerable so we can address root issues and grow. That's how we can transform into the best versions of ourselves. So I'm going to practice what I preach today and be vulnerable with you. So let's get started. I was raised to be a good little girl. I was so focused on always projecting that I had it together, that I was always listening and a good girl and did what was right. But like any of us, we all make mistakes, right? But instead of learning to embrace my flaws and my mistakes, I quickly learned it was so much easier to project that fake perfection rather than admit my imperfections and accept the consequences. Often, the consequence wasn't worth my honesty. And I felt that. I I felt like learning that I didn't want to have a consequence, get punished, because the punishment was so much harsher than being honest. I felt like, oh, if I just lied, then I wouldn't get in trouble. And everyone still thought I was a good little girl. And now fast forward into my life, I see my six-year-old daughter coming up with the same conclusion. She doesn't ever want to admit she failed me or she doesn't want mom or dad to be disappointed in her. So she would rather lie than say the truth. And I'm looking at her and seeing myself at six years old. And it's a crazy aha moment when you see all of your flaws appearing in your child, not just what you've handed down in strength and her personality traits. Now you're seeing, oh, yeah, I've handed down a flaw. And how do I help her through that? How do I curb it? How do I channel it into the best possible way? Because let's face it, we're not going to get rid of our flaws. And that's the whole point of my heroin movement is that we accept that we are flawed, own it, and embrace the awesomeness still inside of ourselves, right? So a huge self-reflection moment is happening when you do see that that extension of yourself walking in your own sort of step of flaws. And I really challenge anyone, if you do have children, it's really interesting and a, a, 
a really big light bulb moment when you see yourselves like it hits home when you see your kids walking in that same footsteps and in your flaws because it does turn the mirror back onto you right it's a little bit easier than to have that mere moment when you're looking at your child doing the exact same thing that you do for flaws and mistakes right so I do want to curb that for myself and I want to curb it for her so she doesn't walk up walk through her whole life like I did feeling like you can't be honest about your mistakes because it took me so long to figure that out it took me into my 30s and I don't want her to go 30 years thinking that she can't own her truth even if it's messy even if it's complicated and a fail please let's just own who we are flaws and all right it's safe to speak truth and that's that's the big thing here i never felt safe i felt like it was more dangerous to be truthful than to lie so then i always picked the easy route i picked the easier one because i didn't want to face these harsh consequences and this is a lesson for parents like nobody's perfect my parents aren't perfect i'm learning that i'm not blaming them but it's a lesson for us to learn and to apply now and do it better when we know more we do better right so like this is for us to learn from our parents and our grandparents and adjust accordingly so we can raise up a generation of heroes a generation of people learning from our mistakes because if we don't learn from them we're doomed to repeat them and i don't want my daughter to repeat my mistakes and it's just like any show that you watch or movie or anything that's been portrayed in a courtroom where the judge says, you know, if you're honest, if you admit that what you did, that you're guilty, then your punishment will be lesser, right? But no one wants to admit that they're guilty. So they'll still hang on to the denial, hang on to the lie. And even though we're being told the punishment will be lesser, we still don't choose that path. We still believe this illusion that if we're untruthful and hide from the truth and deny, we're going to get a lesser punishment. And it never works out that way. And anything that I've looked back on my life where I wasn't honest about up front, if I hid from the truth or just avoided it, it did catch up with me in one way or another. But we didn't learn from that, do we? We just keep repeating that. When we're faced with those challenges, it's always coming back at us to test us. Are we ready to be truthful? Have we learned something? Or are we going to be faced with another test down the road until we learn we need to have truth in our lives? My lies started when I was so little. And they weren't even noticeable, right? That's how, that's how they start. That's how the term comes about little white lies right we tie, tell these little kind of notions to ourselves where they we don't even label them as a lie we lie to others to protect them protect their feelings we lie to ourselves because we're not ready to admit truth to our own minds and hearts right but they do catch up with us and they turn into big lies and then you look at your life and where you are as an adult and you're like wow I've told some lies in my life and why they weren't always warranted they're just a reaction because we want to save face because we don't want to get in trouble because we don't want to hurt somebody but they cost us somewhere down the line I never wanted to show people that I was flawed that I did make mistakes so I lied made sure I had this beautiful mask of perfection. I don't know who I was fooling because I'm sure they knew that I was telling a lie, but I couldn't admit it to myself and I couldn't admit it to others. And I didn't want people to reject me if they knew the truth. I was so afraid of not being accepted or loved that I would just put on this fake lie because I was too afraid to be truthful. I was too afraid to show them the flawed person looking at them. So I, I became the lie. And this then led into a very interesting talent of being adaptable. 
wherever I was in life, whatever situation, social setting, group, I found that I learned how to be a chameleon, that I could adapt into the situation and be what they wanted me to be. You know, and I often talk about this like that that is a strength of mine that I'm very adaptable to any situation. A chameleon has a strength, but when you adapt so much and for so long and don't go back into who you really are from time to time and check in with who you are, then you run into the problem of not knowing who you are anymore because you become what everybody wants to see rather than who you really are and stepping into that and showing people that I am flawed, that I do have a different opinion, you know, that this is who I am, but I can also show you what you need from me as well, but I'm going back to the ba- to the base of who I am. And if you never do that, then you're really living a lie. And that's taken me a long time to filter out how to step into the strength of being adaptable, but knowing who I am at the same time. It's being fluid but also having such a deep-rooted sense of who you are and and understanding we are flawed and it's okay to admit that, right? And so it's okay to be adaptable, but not so much so where you lose the, your sense of self, right? So I'm really encouraging people here, you know, to be honest, to take this step with me, this journey of about lying and kind of tearing down these walls. And maybe this is a little bit of a taboo subject because who talks about lying? Who admits that they lied, right? It's a very interesting kind of social experiment because not not too many people will come out and say, yeah, I lie to people, right? <laughs> who will be my friend if I say I have a problem with lying? I I want... I couldn't believe how much I had lied. I'd gotten so used to it. And that's just like anything. We do one thing, we feel guilty. We do it a second time, we feel a little less guilty, but it's still there. But if you do it over and over and over, that guilty feeling goes away. And now it's just part of your routine. And that lying became my routine because it was a sense of protection. That little girl inside of me was like, hold on, if you lie, you won't get hurt. So do the lie, do the lie. Don't face the consequence. Don't be rejected. You'll still be loved as long as you tell this little lie. And I started to believe that little girl. That was self-protection in that very moment, but it was harming me down the line. Like I said, there's always a cost. And I lied to myself that I was just like everybody else. We all have hangups, right? I didn't want to admit I had a problem with self-esteem. Because if you can't admit when you've messed up, that's a big red flag that there's a deeper issue going on. And that was with me. I had a really big problem with self-love. I lied to myself over and over. I lied to my family because I didn't think they would accept or love me if they really knew who I was flaws and all, all of my fears, all of my visions and goals that may be a little bit quirky and out there, everything about me, I didn't think I would fit in that right box for people to accept the truth. I lied in my relationships because men never felt safe. I lied at work because I never wanted my bosses or coworkers to think I was capable of mistakes. I lied to people that I wasn't angry or hurt by them because I would rather bear that broken heart than have someone be mad at me or have conflict or know that I wasn't okay with them. Is this ringing any bells with anybody else? Lying was a big obstacle in my marriage right from the get-go. My husband is my person. He's my rock. He is the cheese to my macaroni, but I still didn't feel safe to be truthful to him before we were married. All of the raw truths I was hiding inside, he stuck it out, though. 
He is the most patient person alive. And I mean that. Like, if you look up patient in the dictionary, his picture and his name should be beside the word. He embodies the word and the meaning of being patient. And he stuck by me, even though time and time again, he would say to me, I just want you to be honest. I don't care what the truth is. I want the honesty. We can work through it all. But it was like I didn't believe him because life had taught me in my past that if I dared showed a little bit of honesty, there was such a repercussion that I couldn't handle it, that that little four-year-old girl inside of me, the inner child, was like, protect yourself. Don't tell the truth. And I couldn't get past that because there had been circumstances in my life where it proved otherwise. It proved that I wasn't safe to be true, that men weren't safe. But not all men are are dangerous. I've had some circumstances where that proved that certain men in my life weren't safe, but that doesn't mean all men are blanketed unsafe, right? And my husband was the epitome of safety. But I had to learn that. I had to break down some walls and allow truth and safety to sink in. And my truth was safe with my husband. And a trick that he did to help me with that was he created cone of silence. That's right. I write about this in my book, Heroin. He said, you know what? Why don't we create this this little sacred cone of silence that you can say anything to me and there's no repercussions. There's no reaction. There's just truth. And he was allowed to do the same. And we would cuddle in bed early on in our marriage and it would be like cone of silence time. And it was of just a path. It was a way for me, a pathway to be honest and not be afraid of any reaction. And because he is so patient and he doesn't have a jealous bone in his body and he has no reaction, it was just like this very safe place for me to really test that truth was safe. And he proved that right. He allowed me to say what I needed to say in this beautiful safety net, this cone of silence where he didn't react And time over time, day by day, he built a trust pathway, a bridge with me. And he brought me over to the other side where I began to be truthful in my life. It was such a beautiful journey with him. And I thank him for that. He brought me over to the other side. He saved me from a life of lying to myself and to others and allow truth to be safe again. And I really honor that, that he was patient with me on that one and and just gave me that space and no judgment and no reaction. And he created this person that could be safe and truth again. And like, what a beautiful thing to say and to have in a relationship, in a partnership. And it was just just a start of of being an adult and being truthful again and allowing myself to be a better version of myself. I still struggled though with, with honesty. It didn't happen overnight, but I was getting better at this whole being truth thing. Right. But a big obstacle was still with anyone that was in authority over me. I still would cower like a little child that needed a timeout and was, needing to be on the naughty chair. Whenever I was confronted with being um, in a situation where I might get into trouble, um, especially with someone that was older than me, a male or a masculine type of energy, or like a boss, right? Anyone that was an authority over me, I still struggled to own my space, to own that even though I might be in the wrong here, I can stand tall and, and admit it. And, and face whatever repercussion might come of it. But I'm not lesser then. So I had to learn to rise and be equal on, a, on an equal level playing field, even with someone in authority over me. There's still respect there, but I'm still an adult and I'm still equal of respect. 
and I'm not a little kid in trouble. Oh, that was a big lesson. And I'll be really honest here. It happened in my 30s at a job. And I was faced with a situation where a boss confronted me. And it wasn't anything that serious. This is the the hilarious thing. Like, I didn't even do anything that wrong. I did something they maybe didn't want me to do down the road. But all I had to say was, yes, I did that. My bad. You know, I won't do that again. Or argue my point that it wasn't anything wrong and I could still do this. But right in that instant, instead of taking a moment, collecting my thoughts and being on the level playing field with my boss, I went into complete freak out mode. When we, when we talk about flight, fight or freeze, I went deeply into the flight mode. Panic, complete into the four-year-old girl in trouble and shrunk down. And then instead of taking my what I call my three second rule, take three seconds and really decide what your next words will be. I didn't take those three seconds. I spewed it out a lie. And then once you spewed out the lie, you either have to commit to the lie, or then you have to be honest, you just lied. And I committed to the lie. And then I went into panic mode and like, oh my goodness, what a defining moment in my life. It it became a 24 hour saga. And then a, a really big life lesson for me of what just happened. It could have been over in 30 seconds. And I stretched it out to a 24 hour deal ordeal, which then led to me being mistrusted at my job because I completely got caught in the lie a day later. And I went home over the course of the next month and really dissected that whole situation. It was amazing to me of how I had done that periodically throughout my entire life get caught up in some sort of conflict, revert to a lie and deny it and deny it and just deny it till it it went away. But obviously that never went away because these situations kept rising up in my life, being faced with a moment to be truthful. And I never rose to that occasion. And then all of a sudden this moment in my thirties, I'm already a mom, I'm working and I'm faced with yet I've told another lie. And why am I here? And why am I lying in my 30s to somebody else when it wasn't even an offense? Like I could have just owned it. And I like wanted to figure out why I do this because this one was so blaring and there was a huge consequence and I was caught. I had obviously gotten away with most of it up until my life, but I was caught here and I didn't like that I had done this. And I was on this personal growth journey and I didn't want to keep lying when I didn't need to. I, I just wanted to own who I was and accept whatever consequence that may be. But there was no need to revert to being this little kid in trouble, right? So I broke it all down. I started dis, dis, dissecting the why behind the lie. And I had a massive debrief with myself of what happened every moment in that 24 hours. I literally sat down and dissected it. And I broke down each thing and saw how my fear of truth launched me into this whole sympathetic nervous system of flight, of get out, this domino effect of reactive behavior rather than conscious action of who I wanted to be. And it was amazing how then you realize this little inner child inside of you is creating that flight response, like get out, abort, abort, lie, get out of this situation, danger, 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 unsafe. And that has repeated since I was a little kid. But this time I actually was sitting in that messiness of my flaws of lies and was realizing I don't always have to hit that flight button. I don't have to launch into that completely anxiety spiral effect of sympathetic nervous system that I can sit here and take my three second rule and apply it to myself and just understand like you have a choice here. 
in three seconds, you take in your head and go 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000 and say, I have a choice to be honest and own my truth and know it's still safe. Even if there's a consequence here, it won't end me. I'm going to be tr- truthful. I'm going to make a conscious choice to be truthful than have a reactive lie. And that was just a huge light bulb and a life changing moment for me to take a step forward in my adult life towards truth. After that, I did find freedom in honesty. A new heart understanding, not a head understanding, a heart one of the truth will set you free. It was such an amazing epiphany for me. And like I said, I'm not always uh, amazing at it. I'm still flawed at my honesty. But I'm taking active steps to be truthful than just a reactive liar. And it's made me be a better mother, a better wife, a better friend, a better person in this world to take action on my truth and find freedom in that. And and what I learned over time is my truth, there is freedom. It's not a, a prison sentence to be truthful. Granted, you can't control the consequence that may happen with other people, but it is allowing me to create a better space for truth, to create a safe place and a zone and it's a learning curve and I don't get it right a lot of the times I over be honest and I haven't always figured out the right way to do it but I'm trying and isn't that what we're doing here in this in the point of life is to try because you will always miss 100% of the shots you don't take so I'm going to try and I may fail gallantly but at least I'm in the ring. And and that's my challenge to everyone here is to learn how to step into that, to try, to step into the ring. I don't care if you fall and fail and be flawed. We all are. We all will fail. But I want you to get back up and try. And I'm trying with my honesty. It's been such an incredible experience to take on and to challenge myself in different situations and to see my daughter rise up to honesty and to have that opportunity to teach her something at six years old versus learning a hard lesson in her 30s. What a beautiful, beautiful gift that is then to reflect back on your own flaws and be the change for your children and allow them to get it earlier in life. It, and that's a, a great gift to have. And, and like I said, I don't always get it right. And sometimes when we try new things and to better ourselves, the pendulum almost has to swing completely to the extreme of the other way where you don't quite know where you fit and where your equilibrium is. But it will settle and you'll do better each and every time that you make an attempt at this honesty, right? So I've had arguments with people and I don't take the three second rule and I overspill and I'm way too honest. And I'm like, oh, wow, clearly missed it there. Clearly could have pulled back and and be more uh, graceful and have humility there. And, And I'm learning. And there's other times where I miss the opportunity to be honest and I've said a lie or I've just been neutral and not said anything. So it's finding that middle ground and that wisdom where sometimes your silence is needed and sometimes your voice is needed and figuring when that out is wisdom and maturity. But you'll only get that by attempting it. You'll never gain that wisdom and maturity if you never do it. So it's about the trying. It's about falling and get back up. Never stay down. A try, try again. Attempt again. And some of you may be listening and being like, I have no issue with being honest. I'm all about honesty is the best policy, right? Well, I have another tip for you guys. If honesty is no issue for you, I applaud you. And and please stick to being honest. But honesty isn't a pathway to be rude either. 
And I've experienced many people that are have no issue with being completely blunt and honest with somebody. But we've got to ask the question, how do you serve up your honesty? Because it's not a pathway to be rude. It's not an excuse. You can't hold the, um, as that as a crutch. Oh, I'm just being honest. So I'm going to tell you how it is. And I don't care if it hurts your feelings. I'm just being honest. No, we have to mix it with some grace and humility. And I compare it to drinking black coffee. Some people do like black coffee. Yes, but it's an acquired taste. You don't obviously start at 18 and can drink black coffee. I remember being like 16 and putting like half the container of sugar and cream in there, right? So you need to remember not everyone is like you. Maybe someone is having a bad day. Maybe someone can't handle harsh, bold truth like black coffee. So maybe we could add just a little cream and sugar into our truth and our honesty. That information, that truth and that honesty will still get digested, but it's mixed with a little bit of sweetener that allows people to accept it. And that's even with ourselves. Allow yourself to have a little cream and sugar with your own truths. You don't have to put yourself down and give yourself such a tongue lashing with your truth. You sit yourself down and be like, okay, I can be gentle with myself and yet still honest. And that's applying it to others too. Add a little cream and sugar with your honesty. Even if it's being upfront and being honest about a flaw or a mistake, you don't have to be like, yep, I bold face just lied to you. You could be like, honestly, I was a little scared of the consequence here and I didn't take three seconds to really think my actions through and I just said a lie and I apologize for that. That um, kind of humility and grace will allow the next person to receive whatever you're saying much more easier and better and creates a safe place for them. So it's all about you know, adding a little sweetener to whatever we're saying with our truth and allowing ourselves to be honest instead of creating this lie because we think it's going to get us free. It's our get out of free jail card, which it might in the immediate moment, but it'll set you up for a bigger test down the road. And it just gets harder and harder as we get it to be adults. So really encouraging everyone here to play with this honesty pill and with ourselves and with others and and challenge ourselves to be more truthful, but mix it with that grace and humility that we create this safety space, this cone of silence where there's no harsh reactions or judgments. We just allow people to be honest about their, their faults because we're all flawed and we're all going to mess up, but it's about overcoming this and leaning into it and learning something about ourselves and allowing ourselves to create more honesty in our life. I'd love to create a ripple effect of honesty, of pure, loving, humble, graceful, merciful honesty that people can converse again and not have these harsh criticisms and reactions and create safety pathways that people feel like I can be honest and not fear a consequence. Because if we were all a little bit more honest, Wouldn't that be just an amazing thing in this world? Honesty. No more lies to ourselves or to others and allow ourselves to grow in such an organic, healthy way into the best versions of ourselves. Oh my God. Amazing. Right? So what did we learn here? We learned that uh, we can examine what conflicts and issues we have in our lives and how we can dissect those situations and self-reflect to help us learn how to be a little bit more honest with ourselves and with others. We can always lean into these moments and birth a better versions of ourselves. Truth will always set us free. Let us practice serving up our honesty like coffee with a little cream and sugar and allow truth to be digested in a sweeter way. Be a seeker of truth and not a liar, liar, pants on fire. So if you enjoyed this show, 
and my pure honesty, please subscribe and support Blaze the Trail podcast. That is it for this week's show. Challenge yourself to be vulnerable. Lean into the difficulties and those conversations and have those open dialogues with people and yourself so we can rise up as our own heroes. And let us breathe fire together. Thanks for listening. I'm Blaze Hunter. You've been listening to Blaze the Trail with Blaze Hunter. To learn more about how you can breathe fire and unleash the hero within, or to listen to past episodes, visit blazehunter.com.